Good afternoon. My name is Diane Flora. I am a volunteer with AARP Louisville's community team. The Louisville community is made up of volunteers from varied backgrounds who all want to give back to the community in some way. As we move forward with virtual events, we are able to expand our reach. In addition to the events AARP is hosting, our national office has many activities you can join. To learn more about the events, be sure to check out our list of upcoming events on our website at www.aarp.org forward slash Kentucky. We also conduct virtual caregiving, fraud awareness, and brain health workshops free across the community. To learn more about these workshops, visit our website again at www.aarp.org forward slash Kentucky. Now, let me introduce to you Chef Nancy. Chef Nancy Russman is a native of Louisville, Kentucky. She has been honored as the 1996 Chef of the Year by the by the Kentucky chapter of the American Culinary Federation and the Chef Celebration Tour honored her as the Louisville Chef Humanitarian and National Chef Humanitarian in 1998. She received the Ladies of Leadership Award from the Kentucky chapter of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation and in 2010 she received the True Spirit Award from the American Culinary Federation's Chef and Chow Foundation. Chef Nancy has taught numerous cooking classes and worked as a professional chef for years. She is also a published author with her 2009 Kids Club Cookbook. Now, over to Chef Nancy. Chef Nancy. A, um, what is it? Spaghetti squash. And the reason I'm doing this, a lot of people now can't, they're celiac and they can't eat anything with flour. So I'm going to make this. Now, if you want to make it with pasta, go right ahead. Get your pasta water boiling and put some salt in it. What I'm going to do to make this cut easier is I'm going to give it to my sous chef, Connie, and she's going to put it in the microwave for two minutes. Now for two minutes, it's not going to explode. I am going to put meat in this. You don't have to. What I'm going to use are these uh, Johnsonville Italian sausage sweet. I don't like the hot stuff. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to put it on the pan with the uh, spaghetti squash and it'll cook with it. Another way to cook it is throw it in your pasta water if you want to. Now, you'll notice I've got white paper on here. It's parchment paper. Buy parchment paper. Put it down. You'll love it. Okay. You don't have to wash it.
Hi again, this is Diane Flora and I'm with AARP Kentucky. And at this time, I'd like to introduce to you uh, information about AARP. I am a volunteer with AARP Global Community Team. The Global Community Team is made up of volunteers with varied backgrounds who all want to give back to the community in some way. As we move forward with virtual events, we are able to expand our reach. In addition to the events AARP is hosting, our national office has many activities you can join. To learn more about the events, be sure to check out our list of upcoming events on our website at www.aarp.org forward slash Kentucky. We also conduct virtual caregiving, fraud, awareness, and brain health workshops free across the community. To learn more about these workshops, visit our website at www.aarp.org forward slash Kentucky. Now, let me introduce to you Chef Nancy. Chef Nancy Russman is a native of Louisville, Kentucky. She has been honored as the 1996 Chef of the Year by the Kentucky chapter of the American Culinary Federation and the Chef chapter of the American, American Culinary Federation and the Chef Celebrated Tour honored her as the Louisville Chef Humanitarian and National Chef Humanitarian of 1998. She received the Ladies of Leadership Award from the Kentucky chapter of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. And in 2010, she received the True Spirit Award from the American Col Culinary Federation Chef and Chow Foundation. Chef Nasty has taught numerous cooking classes and worked as a professional chef for years. She is also a published author with her 2009 Kids Club Cookbook. Now I'd like to turn it over to Chef Nancy. Chef Nancy. Microwave. Two minutes doesn't do it. Try it for four. But I want to get this cut. There we go. La la. Now I need a spoon to scrape the seeds out with. And we'll have it done. And we're going to put it in the oven. I just need a spoon. There you go. Thank you. If you want to work on the other one, you can. My sous chef, Connie. I learned last time I did this that Connie doesn't like cottage cheese <laughs> unless she puts ketchup on it. Now, I think that's very weird, but <laughs> what can I say? So I gave her some ketchup today in case she encounters any. Okay, out. It's kind of like a pumpkin. You got to scrape it out because you don't want those seeds in there. You do the same thing with a butternut or an acorn. Now, I'll tell you something fun to do with acorn squash. If y'all did this with me before and you made Hoppin' John, leftover Hoppin' John, put it in your acorn squash after it's baked for half an hour. And it does great. Okie dokie smoky. Now I got my two sausages that I'm going to cook. And remember, if you're cooking pasta instead of butternut squash, just put it in the boiling water. Now this is some olive oil. And I'm going to rub it around in a little salt. You always want to season everything. Oh, yeah. Now you can use spaghetti squash for all kinds of stuff. I'm using it today for the obvious like spaghetti all right put them upside down to bake them i got it at 375 in about a half an hour we're gonna we're gonna check it okie dokie now what am i gonna do next well i'll tell you we're gonna put the stuff together for this butternut squash but in the meantime i'm gonna turn the burner on 
for the pasta water for my pasta salad. Now, I'm going to put turn this on. No, I'm not. Help! I want that on high. Did I turn it on? No. You didn't turn the fire on. Oh, well. Okay, and you want to salt it like the ocean. You want to give the pasta some flavor. So I'm going to let that go there, and I'll keep an eye on it. Okay, good. I don't want that burning up. All right, what am I going to put in this? Well, a couple of things. One, I want to have mushrooms. You can put any kind of vegetable or not in this, and you don't need a lot. So what I've got here are two huge button mushrooms. You could use another kind if you want it. And I'm just going to slice it, cut it in half, lay it flat, because you always want to cut where it's flat. Otherwise, it'll roll around on you. And see, I'm going right through. I'm not pressing down. I'm not going, ah, because it bruises it. I'm going forward. Okay. Yeah. And don't tell me you can't do this because you have arthritis. I've got arthritis. No complaints. Really, no complaints. I don't want to hear it. Okay. Now, I'm putting my shrooms in my bowl. And the next thing I want to put in there is some carrots. And I got these little kind of carrots that I like. And I'm going to put some on my cutting board. They're shredded carrots. And you don't have to really do much with them. Those can go in the refrigerator. What I'm going to do is cut them up just a little. And I got my carrots ready. See how easy this is? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is some frozen peas. Yummy, yummy, yummy. i got to figure out where they open. I'll make a place to open. And I'm going to do, a, you know, maybe about a half a cup of peas. There you go. That's done. Well, I'm all that today. All right. Now, that's going in with the spaghetti squash or the pasta, whichever one you're cooking. And also, I'm going to want some pesto for this. And I bought some basil because I, unfortunately, don't have any left at home. I'm going to cut this hard part off. And I'm going to show you in a restaurant, you know, if you read like Joy of Cooking, How to Make Pesto, they always tell you to, you want to use garlic and, and pine nuts and parmesan well i do all that different what if somebody's lactose intolerant then i couldn't use pesto what if they're allergic to nuts then i couldn't use the pesto so i'm taking it and i'm gonna ask miss connie or i'm gonna walk right over here i keep asking miss connie too much this, does this go? That's as far as it goes oh well we'll do it right here now i'm gonna put my basil in here and you can do this with any herb that's your favorite and then freeze it i know everybody says freeze it in ice cube trays i don't i take a ziploc bag make it flat and freeze it in that and then when i want it i just bang it on the counter <laughs> well it works now i'm gonna take ooh, take this put it down here Come on, baby. All righty. Now I got my pesto. And that's all I need to do for it. Well, I'm going to sit this over here. And get that out of there in a minute. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do. This is an immersion blender. And if you get the kind, see, this is like this. It also has a whip with it, so you can whip cream. And it also comes with a small little one-cup food processor that you can uh, do this with. I just 
and if you're making a cream soup this winter, maybe you're making a potato soup or a cream of broccoli soup or something, all you have to do is use this. You don't have to do anything and burn yourself. Okay. The other thing I am going to do is I'm going to toast some... I'm using, instead of pine nuts, because they're so expensive, I'm using slivered almonds. They're great. They're yummy. And I'm toasting them on top of the stove. And the reason being is if I put them in the oven, I'll forget they're in there and then I'll burn them. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. So I just got it in here. I'm putting it on the stove and I'll just keep an eye on it. And remember, my pan is going to get hot. So when I take it off, it's still going to be cooking some. Now, I've got everything ready to rock and roll for this. Hey, aren't those nuts what the little Gibbons used to have? Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, those were wild hickories. Yes, that's, oh, my gosh. <laughs> How old are you? All right. That was silly. Now, this is for my pasta salad, and I love these Da Vinci twists. They have a hold down them like a macaroni does, but they're rigid around the side and stuff just sticks to it. They're great. Now, I only want about eight, eight ounces. Okay. Now, yes. I tell you what, they've got an oil to them, and with that oil, what happens sometimes is you get uh, have a problem with it going rancid. All right, now I'm doing garlic for my basil pasta, but again, instead of putting it in the the pesto, I'm doing it separate because I had to do a catering one time. For somebody and they were allergic to garlic I don't think I've ever cooked with that garlic unless it was a dessert well it is so anyway that was a whole nother ball game I'm gonna use a smaller knife okay so I'm gonna mix up chop up mince up this garlic to use when I go to make my hot squash <laughs> oh man I, oh it smells so good can y'all smell the garlic yes. yummy 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 oh absolutely i felt so sorry for not only did i feel sorry for myself because i couldn't use garlic <laughs> i felt sorry for him but you know what i did it was this time of year my garlic chive flowers were blooming there's garlic chives and onion chives, and they've got a white flower, and each of the little petals tastes like garlic. So I took the little flower buds, put them in a bowl, and people could sprinkle it over whatever they were eating. So that was fun. All right, I got my almonds in. I got my Parmesan grated. I got that. That's in the oven. I'm going to get ready here. Let me see if I'm... Oh, they're already starting. To toast. Woo I know that's amazing. All right, that's cooking along. Now I'm going to turn this down a little. Ah, it's like magic. All right, now. Yes, I do. I do. I've got a lot of perennials, and then things like basil. They you have to plant them every year, but I've got perennial French thyme, lemon thyme. I love lemon thyme and oregano, and sage, and rosemary, all that kind of good stuff. Now, I'm going to sit this right here. All right. Now, again, I don't know if y'all heard it or not. I don't know. We were having these issues, technically, and Lord knows I don't know anything about it. Um, I've got my spaghetti squash in the oven. To make it cut easier, you put it in the microwave for two to four minutes. It really depends on your microwave, okay? You don't leave it in there for like 10 minutes because guess what? You'll be cleaning up an exploding mess. Talk about doing it upside 
Oh yeah, you want to make sure when you bake these things, you bake them upside down. How do you know when they're done? They'll start feeling soft on the top. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, how is my pasta here doing? I'm going to get ready to make my pasta salad. I need to get my pasta salad stuff over here, Miss Connie. Repeat the question and then answer it, okay? Can we substitute minced garlic that comes in a jar? All right, if you want to substitute minced garlic that comes in a jar, let me recommend you can do that, except for it ends up that all the flavor's in the oil, plus the fact it's already been cut up. So you're losing a lot, okay? So, yeah, you can, but you might want a little bit more. Well, these are kind of set. Okay. Let's turn that off. Yeah, they're toasted. All right, done. Now, I'm going to have a big bowl that I'm going to put all my pasta stuff in. And I've washed all my vegetables, so don't think I haven't. Now, let me show you something about cutting green onions. Just, yeah, can you sit it there? Yeah. All right, here's the scoop. If you have a real fat one, because we're doing this so everybody tastes something in every bite, just cut it down the middle right there. Y'all are scaring me. <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Bill, Mr. Bill. All right, first thing, I'm going to, now I know it said sliced olives in the smaller can. I love black olives. And since I'm going to be eating this, I got the big can. <laughs> and sometimes I do slice them in half long ways. <clears throat> That's what I get for eating too much. So I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to wait to put that stuff in, but I've got the small black olives. Now, I'm going to cut. Now, don't just slam down the knife. See what I'm doing? Can you see? I'm sawing through it. See? Saw, saw. You got to saw through it or one, you'll bruise it. Haven't you ever been somewhere and had lettuce and it was all brown? It's because they just wah, wah, acted like they were being crazy with the knife and weren't sawing the product. All right, you see what I got here? And I'm going to cut it almost all the way down. All right, there we go. Now, let me check my pasta. Now, you know something? You don't want it to get too low because it'll get gummy. I didn't turn that one off. Well, somebody did. I guess it was me. I turned it down because okay, good. It over. It's gonna... No, I've got the magic touch. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not quite ready yet. So about another minute or two. So tell us, on the pasta, you said don't turn it down because it gets yummy. So you want to boil it? I want to boil it. I don't want it to simmer. I want it to boil. Now, I've got right here a Roma tomato. Why am I using Roma? Well, in the winter, Roma tomatoes really do have more flavor than those horrible winter January red tomatoes. Okay? I won't even eat those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and use my tomato knife. A serrated knife is considered to be a tomato knife. And I'm going to take the little core out. What's fun is to teach kids that are old enough to use knives to cut a tomato. It can be tragic. All right, see the tomato's flat, so it's not going to roll on me. I'm cutting it in half long ways, and I'm going to lay it flat, and I'm going to slice it. See how I'm using it like a saw? La -ti -ti. Yep, my fingers are back, and I Cut it in strips, julienne, or when I'm talking to kids, french fries. And I'm going to dice it. I'm going to come back and dice it. And I'm almost ready with my salad. 
Now, let me tell you, this is a great salad for a luncheon, for dinner, for anything, okay? It's just yummy. And I'm not making the salad dressing because if you want to make your own, please do it. But most people don't want to bother with that. So I got some Italian dressing. Whatever you want to do, that's fine. Now let me see what I've got here. I've got it yet. Somebody told me you throw it up against the cabinet. Yeah, anything. Yeah, it's, it's, it gets sticky. But I mean, it's done. You want it what they what we say. Al dente to the teeth. And this, you want you don't want it to be mush. In fact, I was showing one group how to cook uh, pasta one day, and we cooked it. I don't know what we were making. Maybe a pasta salad. And we got done, and this one gentleman said, well, this isn't cooked enough. And I said, what? And he goes, my mama makes it mushy. <laughs> well, that defeats the whole purpose, people. You don't want it mushy. All right, now let's get, let me check one more time. Because, you know, these people here that are helping me, they're real picky. And if it's not right, i got to hear about it. And I'm not in the mood to hear about it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wait a minute. Off? Mm hmm Okay. She's going to drain it for me. And what I would like for her to do is run it under a little cold water so it doesn't overcook to stop the cooking. You can see the steam coming up. Now, you might want to stir it a little. Mm -hmm. Now, there's something on over here, maybe. I don't know. Well, everything's off, so. Okay, I didn't know what yeah. those meant. Technology, I'm so used to a gas stove. You turn it on, you turn it off. And there you go. Sometimes you don't turn it on. You turn it and have to light it on. But you know what you're doing. All right, let's see. Why don't you stir that a little bit more? All right. To get the water off? Yeah. And let's bring it over here and dump it. Oh, I know. She's a heck of a worker. All right, there we go. Now. I got my pasta. I'm going to put in my green onions. Do you cook the pasta about seven to ten minutes for the pasta salad, Chef Nancy? Well, it, I cook it. It depends on the pasta. Some pastas cook really fast. Some of them, this is pretty thick. So this takes a good ten minutes. Um, you just got to have to figure it out so to speak all right we have our tomatoes tomato tomato there's a song like that oh well i think it's from broadway all right black olives beans this is a pasta fagioli this is very italian to have white beans you can use cannelloni beans is usually what you use. I've got Great Northern because I couldn't reach the cannelloni beans. <laughs> and there was nobody in the aisle helping me, and I wasn't climbing up. You yeah. Well, you know, maybe I should have. Now, artichoke hearts. What I'm going to do so I get some in every bite is I'm going to chop them up just a little, little extra. Because I love artichoke hearts, and most people do. They're something fun. We didn't have them growing up because we didn't have them. And then all these immigrants came, and they wanted them, and we got them. Okay, yeah, just a little bit of, yeah. I just like when they fall apart. I shouldn't be doing that with a knife. Cut my hand, that would be ugly. 
and then we'd have to throw this out, and I'd be upset, and AARP would be upset. Okay, now, you don't want to put too much salad dressing on it. You can always add more. And what type of salad dressing are you this, is, this is an Italian regular vinegar. You could use a balsamic vinegar. I also before have used a Caesar dressing on this and it was really good. So just FYI. Now this is not fat free. Fat free dressing is made with water. I don't like fat free. I'll do low fat, but this is regular. So I'm just going to put some on. Does it sometimes also have more sugar in it? Yeah, oh yeah. Thank you. Everything that the lighter the fat, the more the sugar. And if you're a diabetic, you got to really watch that. Now, I'm going to add some pepper. I know it won't need salt because of that salad dressing. You know, I just remembered that I made this before with um uh Caesar dressing, that makes me want some. <laughs> okay, now again, I'm not using salt. Okay. Let's see what we've got here. Do you ever make beans in an instant pot? No, I don't have one of those. I have a very, very, very small kitchen. And I'm lucky to have a mixer, a blender, and a food processor. I don't have room for anything else. Oh, this is going to be tasty. Yeah. All right. Now, let's put this. Actually, we could probably put it in the refrigerator for a few minutes. Okay. What do you think? That's fine. Ah, why don't you come over here? Much better idea. Now, what I'm going to do is check on. My spaghetti squash. It's not quite ready yet. I forgot my tongs. Um, I've got them in my knife bag. Thank you. I'm checking my... You know, nothing is nicer than... Heck yeah. And if this squash isn't ready in a few minutes, I might have to put it in the microwave for a while. Now that it's cut in half. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, I don't want to. I'm so used to mine. Restaurant ones. Um, now, let's, let's have some questions here. I'm going to drink a little water. Let's go over what we're doing. With a pasta salad, that was simple. Couldn't have been any faster. Now, if you've got a real big carnivore in your house and you have to add meat to it, what's really good is to go to a deli that's got some Genoa salami, okay, G-E-N-O-A, Genoa, and have them slice you. You don't even need a fourth of a pound, but have you slice, say, about 10 pieces real thin, and then cut it in strips and toss it in your pasta salad. And it really is good. But this way, not only is a vegetarian, it's vegan. Because I have no dairy in there. Now, when we go to make the spaghetti squash, or if you're using regular spaghetti, that's fine. If I hadn't added the parm, or if I don't add the meat, guess what? It's vegan. It's also okay for celiacs and i know i keep saying this but let me tell you in the restaurant business that i've retired from talking to my buddies what they've said is it's gotten so crazy because of allergies and wheat is one of the big allergies people are discovering i've got i've got a friend um let's see gina page just turned 58 or 56 or something and she found out four years ago, she is celiac. She quit, every time she quits eating wheat, her face doesn't break out. I mean, it's so interesting how a lot of people are being tested for stuff that we didn't know about before. 
And so you got to take this stuff seriously. It's like people being lactose intolerant. We could even add some Parmesan or some grated mozzarella to that salad. You know, again, that wouldn't be vegan. That would be vegetarian. Vegan is no dairy. I could never be vegan because I absolutely adore cheese. I don't know about other people, but I love it. And I could not go without it. I'm going to put this over here for right now and just let it sit there. And I got my nuts ready. That somehow didn't sound right. Then I got my almonds. Hey, Nancy, can you repeat how to put the squash time and temperature? Yes. First, you take your squash, put it in the microwave for two, four minutes, whatever. It depends on your microwave. And this, like with my oven, I don't know that this really is 375. I've got a feeling it's like 300 because it's not cooking very fast. Either is the sausage. Um, well, let's just see what happens because we can stick it back in the microwave. Do you have a glass plate that you can put in the microwave? Okay. And that'll take care of it. Uh, cut it in half. Take the seeds out. Oil, salt, and pepper, turn it upside down, put it in a 375 oven, and check it in a half an hour. And on parchment. Yeah, all oh, parchment paper is the way to go. I mean, I always cook my bacon in the oven because that's the best way to do it. And I put parchment paper down, put my bacon down, put it in the oven. I put it in at 350 for 20 minutes. And unless it's real thick bacon, it comes out perfect. So I, I always bake your bacon. I mean, that's, you know, my, my one niece has uh, three boys, two of them are twins. And they, I've never seen anybody eat like them. And I mean, we're talking two pounds of bacon for breakfast in the morning. And so when she would have a mess doing it on top of the stove. So when I taught her to teach the boys to bake it in the oven, I was her friend forever just forever. So anyway, all right, now let me check this again. And I'm also going to check. Uh, now these aren't doing right. So let me pull this out. And we'll put these in the nuke away for a minute. Okay. The nuclear, nuclear wave. Mm -hmm. Yo, mama. Explain what an induction oven is. I'm not good at explaining that. Uh, Try it for about five minutes. Okay, now, see how nice this is? All the dirt, where is it? On the parchment paper. Now, you still have to wash this, but my goodness, how easy is that? Easy. Easy peasy. Now, what I'm going to do while we're doing that, I'm going to cut my sausage up. Okay? And you want it bite size. And see, it's cut all, it's cooked all the way through. So that's nice. But if it wasn't, you can always add it, cook it the rest of the way in the saute pan or saucepan or whatever you're using. Would you do that after you cut it up? No. If you try to cut up raw sausage, it's just a mess. Absolute mess. Yeah, Nancy, you had to cook the... Uh squash longer because you could tell by touch it wasn't done. Right. You touch it and if it's soft, it's done. Okay. Now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pan here and I'm going to put some oil in it, some earl. This is EVOO is, what's, who is that that says that? She gets on my nerves. Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> who needs Rachel Ray when you're 
<laughs> well, let me tell you something funny. One day, some friends of mine came into town for Derby, and they were picked up by a chauffeur. They were being entertained by General Electric. Uh, her husband owns the largest General Electric, sells the most in a single store on the West Coast. So anyway, so we're talking about that. And all of a sudden, uh, the guy in the limousine says to her, well, what are you here for? Derby? And she said, yeah. She said, I'm also here to meet my friend I went to college with. Hello, Puma Vets. And Connie, if you're watching, I'm talking about you. Anyway, she said something about her friend was a chef. And the limousine driver went, oh, is it Chef Nancy? <laughs> well, after that, she started calling me Rachel Ray of Louisville. I thought I was going to kill her. Well, you know, I would if I made that kind of money. I mean, she is, she's like uh, Martha Stewart. She's got her own blasted thing, energy. I mean energy oh for crying out loud her own uh empire yeah. now i don't want this garlic to burn and it'll burn easy so if you cooked real pasta you'll have pasta water if you didn't we're just going to use some plain water and i'm going to put it in there a little bit and i this will start tasting and smelling like some good garlic you want the garlic to get in so that you know don't you hate when you bite a piece of garlic and it's like garlic well if you do this it's not going to do that i minced it i got some water in there and it's soaking it up okay how long can this recipe be kept in the fridge oh well in a restaurant, you can't leave it more than three days. At home, if you got a good temperature on it, four days, maybe five. But here's the trick. Oh, thank you for asking that, whoever did. Here's a trick. When you go to put food that's hot in the refrigerator, if you don't let it cool some before you put a lid on, it's going to sour. So if it's still hot and you put it in the refrigerator, might I suggest that what you do is you take it and uh, leave the lid off for a while, even in the refrigerator, because it will sire. Um, I know a chef here in town, he owned this uh, really fine deli. He used to work with me at a four-star restaurant, and this deli was just the bomb. Anyway, somebody he had a big catering coming up, and he smoked four turkey breasts. When they came out of the oven, he wasn't there, and the guy wrapped them up real tight and put them in the refrigerator. When they pulled them out the next day, they were all sour. So just, you know, watch it. Now, can I don't know if y'all can see it all, but my, my butter, uh, my butter, my uh, water's just about gone. It's just, see, it looks like it's almost all oil. So I'm going to start putting my vegetables in. Oh, don't hurt yourself, sister. Well, why don't you let me see? Here, put it right there. May I have a fork, please? Oh, yeah, they're getting there. Fork. I'm going to fork this. Now, see, when you turn it over, can you see that steam? Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to make sure that's done like that. It's starting to get soft. I'm just going to leave it alone for a minute. And in a minute, I'm going to. You want to cut up aluminum foil or something? No, 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 because I'm going to have to hold that oh, okay. to scrape it. Give me that black bowl, please. Boy, I'm working her bottom off, aren't I? Yeah, <laughs> we can scrape this into there. Okay, now, <laughs> did I turn this off? You probably did when you uh, lifted the pan. Just an induction mm -hmm. break. 
That's that's good. Yes, it is, but it's not a great thing for your pocketbook. <laughs> Just saying, because you can't use regular pots and pans on this, like the ones I carry in my car that I use for uh, farmers markets and all that. I can use them on a grill, or I can use them on a burner, but I can't use them on this it won't work on this come on get okay now i'm sauteing this this is going to be yummy now while i'm doing that to add some more flavor i'm going to and i'm going to carry this over like this can y'all smell this yeah, sausage even through our masks. <laughs> you know you can use hot too if you want but i use the sweet italian and see, we're letting all these flavors meld. And actually, if this wasn't cooked all the way, some of the fat would go into this. But we're we're doing good right now. Why yeah. Do you call it sweet Italian, because it's sweet instead of hot. But what do they put? What do they put in it? Sugar? That oh no, no, it's just the ingredients. If it's hot, they put peppers in it, yeah. and they just say it's hot. Okay. Okay. Don't confuse it. See, she's she's doing it again. We've got 12 minutes left in this. All right. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to try to scrape this out in 12 minutes. It should come. See, if y'all. Aha. There you go. Now, one of the things I did do, I washed this before I cut it. Did you know that any kind of produce, like, like say you've got your. Um, Oh, melons. Okay. If you don't wash them before you cut them, whatever's on the outside goes on the inside. That's why I never buy the already cut up stuff in the grocery because I really don't know how sanitary they're being. And I'm pretty picky about that because I lived in the bathroom one whole day. See what happens? You just scrape it out. See what I'm doing? Whoops. Scrape her out. Now, let me let me suggest you do the way I do this, but I want y'all to see how to do it. Um, you can do this the day beforehand and just scrape it out the next day. Oh, yeah, Shortens your cookie time. Yeah, while you're having your potable beverage, as we do here in Kentucky, as we're sipping on our bourbon, um, you could be cooking this the night before. So it's going to scrape the same whether it's cold or hot. Right. It's going to scrape the same whether it's cold or hot. Well, I can't get any more out of that without killing myself. Woo! When you say it's a hottie, it's a hottie. Okay, let's uh, turn that way down. Okay, got more to scrape out. Now this is a small one. You can get bigger ones. I'm sorry y'all can't watch me do this, but I don't know how else to do it. You're fine. We see everything you're doing. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. As long as you've got enough for me to taste that. Well, heavens yes. <laughs> and Connie. Yeah. Oh well, Connie's Connie's got the world to go to. <laughs> Studio audience. Well, <laughs> oh, always make enough for them. When I used to have to do, when I was at the food bank and have to do those early, too early in the morning television shows, I would, uh, I mean, you know, and here I'm making stuff at four o'clock in the morning with salami and stuff like that. Those people would eat <laughs> so much of it. I don't know how they ate that at 4 30 in the morning. I told the sous chef. To come around to this side because otherwise it just looks like a disembodied arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's magic. All right, we can scrape more out of this in a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, here, uh -oh. well, why don't I just make a complete mess? <laughs> hmm. Ready? Right. Here we go. 
Now, if y'all never made this stuff before, it is fun to have. Okay. See, if I add a bigger squash, this would fill up a little bit more. Now, what do I want? My almonds. And where is my rubber spatula? There she blows. Put the pesto in it. Then I may not have gotten chopped up all the way. Oh, I got a big leaf in there. Holy baby. How did I not chop that up? Bad chef. Bad. No bonus this quarter. All right. Got my, well, my flipping stuff everywhere, aren't I? All right. I'm going to put some Parmesan cheese in it. Huh? She's going to stick it in her mouth. <laughs> All right. Now, I need a small plate. To put some of this on. Or, here, wait a minute. Watch this. Oh, let me see that for right here. A small plate? I'm going to put it on this plate and we can serve from here. Okay. I'll plate. I need my. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? May I have my. She doesn't even have to tell me what she wants. See, these, this rubber spatula I've got is not one that you bake with. This one, the temperature will go up to 450. So it won't melt on you when you're using it. And it'll last for quite a while, even with me messing with it. You want to get the salad out, please? Pretty please with ice cream on it. Here, let me turn that plate. All righty now. I think I'm going to put a little bit of this on the pasta. Now, if you don't want to use tomatoes, which sometimes in the winter I don't, and I could have used more tomato in this for color. Another thing you can use, you can buy a jar, and you can use them for all kinds of stuff, are the roasted red peppers. Roasted red bell peppers, or buy a jar of pimentos and, and drain them. Put them on a, a paper towel to get that oil off of them and put them in here. If you want, yes. And you want to hydrate them, put them in a little oil or whatever you buy them. So, ladies and gentlemen, out there in video land, and I would like to say if any of my swimming people are out there, you better fix this stuff or I'm not going to talk to y'all anymore. <laughs> um, we've got our pasta salad. And then we have, oh, always get rid of these blasted rubber bands or they'll end up in your food. <laughs> And we have this. Now, let me tell you, this is great if you're a celiac. And there's a lot of things you can do with all the winter squashes. This is just, you say, spaghetti squash. People expect you to do this with it. Um, oh, now that this is cool, you can see how you just scrape it out. Okay. Yeah. This is just yummy. Now, I know one thing I've done with this before is I've put it like made a uh, like a pancake out of it. You know, add a little egg and a little flour. 
and some seasoning and uh, do it like a, a potato cake or something like that. I mean, you can do anything with these things. Um, I one of my favorite things. Oh, I told you about me making a mousse out of the out of a, a butternut squash, and acorn squash is yummy. And the stuff doesn't have to be sweet. I mean, everybody thinks about acorn squash and they think it's going to be sweet because it tastes like pumpkin. You don't have to do that. In fact, it makes a great soup. Roast some squash, whether it's acorn or butternut or both. Throw some, get some big carrots, toss those in oil, put them on the pan. An onion, cut it in half, toss a little oil, salt, and pepper, put it in there. Roast it. When you get done, take everything out. Take all the meat out of your squash. Hit it with an immersion blender. And you add a little chicken stock to it or vegetable stock. And you got your something and you top it with a slice of butter. Oh, man. Yeah, it's pretty good. That was so, butternut squash, right? No, no this is a spaghetti squash. See, it's spaghetti. Oh, in the, in the summer, yeah. And there's also a grocery store here in Louisville called Value Market that actually has a truck and they go to the farmer's sales and bring that stuff back. And if you grow it, but let me tell you something a lot of people don't know real quick. If you buy something at the farmer's market, it's been sitting in the sun. You don't necessarily want to refrigerate it. What you want to do is run under cold water because it'll keep ripening. It's like tomatoes or anything. Don't put your tomatoes in the refrigerator because they're there, but you can run them under cold water for a minute or two to stop the ripening process. It's like stopping the cooking process. Secrets. Yeah. Secrets. Oh, I got so many secrets. And maybe we'll, maybe the next show will be Secrets of Chef Nancy. There you go. Well, my basil, my basil pesto is a secret that we all the restaurants make pesto like that. We don't add all that stuff because we can't. So there you go. What do you think? I love it. Now we got ourselves an Italian dinner. Are this is samples please yes we just need some way yo there you go chef nancy dish her up la Right. Come on, studio audience. Come on, studio Go audience. Go for it. Get in here and get some forks. Tara, you're first. Oh, yeah. Connie, you're first. Oh, here we go. Tara, you're second. Forks for you guys. Yummy, yummy. My turn. Perfect. Oh, wait a minute. Let oh, me give you some of this. That. That'd be good. Mm-hmm. Ooh, thank you. Look Jeff. how colorful these plates are. <laughs> you know, I, I sent something out, and I don't know if they sent it out to you all or not, but it talks about um, if you eat your colors every day, you'll be extra healthy because every color does something different. For instance, white vegetables like these mushrooms and cauliflower and that help with your immune system. Red vegetables do a lot for your heart. I mean, there's all kinds of tricks to the trade. Thank right, you, Chef. Goodbye, everybody. Very goodbye. Good. Farewell, our Vitor Saint. Oct I can't Enjoy. sing. Enjoy. Enjoy. Have fun. As as they say in um, what's the country? It's Italy. Manja. Manja. Nancy's really good. You're killing me. Simple. Delicious. Very good. Mm -hmm. And that crunchiness, too. Yeah, see, you got all kinds of. See, in the sausage, it's so simple. Instead of making meatballs and all that stuff, you know. They're good. One year, 4th of July, when we used to have 4th of July. <laughs>